Hi, this is Dan Winter. I'm here with uh, engineer Bill Donovan, our genius, and Paul Harris, who's our alchemist. And we're here to talk about the amazing revolution in life force and clothing called the Fractal Clothing Revolution. And Roger's coordinating that in New York, and we're very delighted to work with him on the science level. So getting to the heart of the issue, every fashion person knows that people feel better when they wear some cotton instead of some polyester. But has anybody ever explained the science to you? Well, there was a famous professor named Phil Callahan in Florida who for years was measuring life force in trees and other things, and he built this antenna, this probe, to measure whether a tree was alive or dead electrically. And the probe was made of hemp fiber. And then he would dip that hemp fiber in either living seawater or actually human sweat, and then it would bake in the sun, and it would become a fabulous related to something called an electret or a conjugate dielectric, it would become a very, very sensitive capacitor. How do you vis visualize that? It's just like getting the dielectric of your clothing correct is like getting the electrical tuning of a bell correct. Because a dielectric means the quality of the insulator between the plates of a capacitor. Dielectric, as we were just saying, can be visualized as imagining measuring how efficiently a bell rings after you hit it. If a bell rings forever after you hit it, that means the dielectric of the capacitor is perfect. Now, what does this have to do with clothing, or your house, or your blood, or your village? Getting the dielectric right for your clothing means that your aura can breathe in very simple terms. Look, your aura is not a DC current. Your aura is a vibration, it's obvious. Well. If you're wearing something whose the dielectric is bad, say polyester for example, it means your aura has to do a lot more weak, more work to radiate charge without getting weak. So you know how, for example, if you go in a house and the house is made of organic materials, you feel a whole lot better. Whereas if you walk into a steel or aluminum box, you feel like merde, where in France I can say that. So the, the, the reason is because your aura cannot breathe. So we've applied that to biologic architecture and we're successful. Now we're applying that to the clothing industry. We're going to reinvent fashion because not only is it a matter of using the right fabrics, you know, cotton is okay, hemp is better, there's a whole cascade and lineage of fabrics that have the best dielectric, but then it's how you treat it and how you dye it, and Paul is going to speak about that also a bit. But for example, if there are some gold threads in there adding to the capacitance, and if the if the treatment, you know, in the original they used a, a, a living seawater baked in the sun. That's how Callahan did it. Mm -hmm. And we know that actually the living seawater is how they make the living agricultural ormus with an alkaline treatment. Well, imagine if that's in your clothing. It means your body becomes a capacitor. You know what a dream spell is? Or you know when you fall in the spell of love? What that literally means is you get embedded in the aura of another person. So the inertia of the aura is everything to do with your life force, your, not just your spirituality, but how long you're going to live. In fact, in medicine it's called harmonic inclusiveness predicts vitality. You can tell how long anything is going to live just by measuring if it's harmonics or inclusive, whether it's audio or capacitive, etc. Well, if your clothing has the right capacitance, and then there's a whole field of color. Look, we now know exactly why if you put sunlight in a classroom instead of fluorescent, or, that attention span goes way up because it's the frequency signature. Now supposing you knew exactly which frequencies of color made a phase conjugate caduceus based on golden ratio, so your, your color scheme would actually be implosive, phase conjugate dielectrically. You can actually pick fractal color. We have a whole science, new science on the fractality of color. And speaking of that, um, let's see, Bill, do you, you want to say something? And then Paul's going to say something about, about dyes okay. and colors as well too. Well, one thing is uh, we've been talking about how to produce uh, biologically active architecture by polarizing the walls so that uh, you have a permanent negative charge on the interior walls. Well, you could do the same thing with clothing. If you create an electret out of the clothing and you polarize that, that means that you have a permanent negative charge next to your skin. Well, what does this do? Well, in uh, the ion effect, it was noted that uh, a negative polarization is bacterial static. It's very uh, health promoting. Negative ion wind, absolutely, right. yes. But if your clothing does that, mm -hmm. if it, um, for example, right now we have Swiffer cloths that are electrets and furnace filters. Well, why not do the same thing with your clothing? If Permanently you, hold charge. Right. 
If you did that, then you're going to have something that literally draws the, the charge out of the air in the environment and deposits it on the surface of the skin. And this is going to actually increase oxygenation in the surface capillaries itself. It was noted in the same book that uh, if you reduce the ion count down to zero, that the O2 saturation plummets. So increasing the charge density on the surface of the skin will boost the O2 concentration levels, the saturation levels inside the body itself. <laughs> It's a beautiful thing. Imagine you're in the fashion industry, you're walking down the aisle with a new fashion, and it's literally a fractal attractor for charge. Well, it would attract attention, because that's what attention is. <laughs> Negantropic centripetal. Thanks, Bill. That's a great thought. Mm -hmm. And making you healthy at the same time. I mean, that's right. one of the things. You started off talking about the polysynthetic materials, and, and that's exactly what they're doing. You've got to look at your body and your clothing as the uh, dielectric, I guess, if you will, against the two plates, which are the air and the atmosphere around you, mm -hmm. and your body yourself. And with those polysynthetics, they're actually bleeding the charge, exactly. pulling the charge, right. the life force out of you, yeah. spilling it out away, where we're right. talking about collectively charging the body and, and, right. and, and putting the charge inwards. And what happens with a lot of these synthetics is that they actually have the positive side on the surface right, of the, the skin, surface of the skin. Mm. so Absolutely. yeah, it's actually reverse it's a polarity, yeah, which is right. explicitly you bleeding you. Yeah, whereas <laughs> in Arab countries, it's always well known. Well, you have this thick natural fiber, and then there's an like air gap to your skin, right. which can build charge. And you know the Jesus story that he knows when somebody's touching his robe, it's because the capacitor is so well tuned. Or somebody has OCD. <laughs> and that's keeping them cool during the day in the desert and warm in the night. We were just in, in Peru and we were up in the mountains and this, we met this Keshawa elderly uh, woman who does all these beautiful weavings, the fabric, and, and she really got into the dyes and the traditional vegetable dyes and how they did it. And what I found interesting was traditionally the way you fix dyes is using salt. So you're actually, once you have your material dyed, then you're embedding it just basically in a salt water and having a crystalline fine structure that actually fixes the dyes to the fabrics. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you looked at an electron scanning microscope of some mm -hmm. fibers, these are all antenna that are sticking right. out of the fabrics. Yeah, right? there's also a galvanic effect with that as well. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So yeah. this whole crystalline structure idea mm -hmm. on the fabrics is just absolutely brilliant. Uh, and yeah. I, just since you mentioned that, Paul, I learned something from the Quechua when mm -hmm. I was there, which was that the Quechua language was a syntax of the shadows of slip knots in rope at right. phase angles. Oh, so yeah. here is the braiding Absolutely. in your clothing, oh, yes, right. and it's literally a language. I mean, you know, our ancient seraphim ancestors used to carve their genetic records as shadows of donuts right. on copper and gold foil. They didn't have writing, they just wove it into the material. That's right. Yeah. So the, the yeah. actual weave of the material, I mean, we could, this could get highly oh, esoteric. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But you see the point that you're actually wearing the raiment of your DNA's braid, mm -hmm. yeah? the sacred garment of fractal living clothing. Now there is one other thing I'd like to mention as well is smart clothing right. and this is getting into nitinol and nitinol fibers. Mm -hmm. uh, for example in the early days when we were using nitinol strips and right now they're in uh, heart stents in uh, right. anti-scald valves inside of shower heads that sort of thing. Okay well why not go down in scale instead of up if you create fibers, and these things are incredibly strong, we're talking about 20,000 psi actuation force. I mean, this is much stronger than any kind of hydraulic. Sure. So if you place some of these fibers inside of the clothing, I mean, uh, these things have programmable temperatures for actuation. Mm -hmm. See, there, it's a fiber that remembers. So it remembers its angle or braid angle and will go back to it when you tell it. Right. So you can actually make exoskeletons, you can make clothing. Or anti-wrinkle clothing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, all you have to do is just put it in the sunlight, boom, the, the wrinkles yeah. will disappear. <laughs> so. And the night and all thread industry could, is evolving in this direction. And it all has to do with fractality because the reason your raiment or your braiding or your garment, the garment of your aura, if your aura's braid is fractal and recursive, that means the folded surface has been maximized, which is the definition of intelligence and brain surface and cell surface. Mm -hmm. So fractal clothing is actually a name for the fact that your clothing begins to be, have the braid fractality, right. the memory of the shape mm -hmm. of your own aura. Right. Mm -hmm. right, and this is using shape memory materials to do this. 
and we are a shape memory. <laughs> Thanks, Roger.